many people here is the first time seeing us? This is the San Francisco Bay Area, also known as the East Bay. It's an area in California that includes many picturesque cities like Oakland, San Jose, and San Francisco itself. The sights of blue skies and palm trees are enough to inspire peaceful thoughts of paradise. A blissful escape from reality where scenic beaches and romantic sunsets are commonplace. Oh, it's also home to the meanest hardcore bands the world has ever known. Like Gulch, for example. They'll intimidate you until you're a piss-soaked rat. Tsunami will simply threaten and bully you, making you wish you were in high school again so you could tell the principal. Whereas Drain? Well, Drain's just gonna run you over. The passion for punk and hardcore have a storied history in the East Bay, enduring like 40 plus years at this point. It was considered like a huge punk rock destination for all those teenagers that were leaving home to be in punk bands throughout the 80s and 90s. When they first arrived to the coast, they felt that they had hit the punk rock mecca. But it wasn't long until they realized, oh man, this is just regular old America. I need a job and pay rent and stuff, and shit, this place is really expensive. And they also found out that the punk community that they were trying so hard to ingratiate themselves in was as insular and elitist as the Silver Creek Valley Country Club. They would become disillusioned and move back to wherever they came from quicker than you can say Operation Ivy got popular and then broke up because they hated being popular. This entire sentiment was summed up beautifully by Tim Armstrong of Rancid in their 1995 song Journey to the End of the East Bay off their iconic record and Out Come the Wolves. Gilman Street in the East Bay was like the venue, okay? And Lookout Records and Operation Ivy put all of that on the map. And if any California trope is accurate, it's the locals only one that they have in the East Bay. And hey, I get it. I don't want tourists to come into where I live and just make a commodity out of my lifestyle. This would cause Op Ivy to break up because like I said before, they didn't want to be popular, not even a little bit. But it wasn't long until Gilman and Lookout Records would propel another act to success. And this time, it was big label mainstream success. This time it was fucking Green Day. But initially, Green Day wasn't the band that the majors wanted. The majors were courting Rancid because I gotta fucking mention here that Rancid had two members of Op Ivy and they really proved themselves to be like, you know, worth money or whatever. But Rancid were like, nah, we don't wanna do that. We wanna stay with our friends down here on Epitaph. So then that forced the labels to go to other bands around the Gilman area and they found Green Day. Yes, boy, they did. Like there's an alternate timeline where an outcome the wolves replaces Dookie in pop culture and I don't have any idea how to process that image. But either way, the East Bay was gonna be on the forefront of the huge boom of the punk scene in the 90s. But that's all like whatever, who cares, you know? What's cool is that it's been over 40 years and the East Bay is still bumping. Like right before the pandemic, there were two bands in particular that were generating widespread buzz. Tsunami put out a couple samplers and Drain put out an LP on Revelation Records. Word of mouth would spread about these projects while we were all isolated to our computers and phones like a bunch of League of Legends neckbeards. The fans couldn't slam, so the anticipation just kept on building. And on June 19th, 2021, it happened. Real Bay shit. A show, yes, a live performance headlined by Tsunami and Drain in the East Bay. And like, shit was lost. Look at this fucking turnout. That's goddamn massive. I equate the Bay Area hardcore scene to the ECW wrestling scene of the 90s. Hardcore, loyal, grassroots, and immensely popular beyond anything that they should be. The only difference is, Gilman didn't sell to a billionaire that should be a trillionaire because he'd surround himself with a bunch of idiot sicko fans. It's amazing to me that the DIY values have endured for so long in the area. It has stayed true after all these years 
while simultaneously creating global superstars. I've never been to California, so I can't say for certainty that it's the best scene that ever existed, but all I can say is that the music and the values live free inside me, roasting weenies, exercising his squatter's rights.